Syria! 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 It starts with talking about deporting criminals, but it does not stop. This is just the beginning. Germany is lifting an eight-year-long ban on deportations to Syria, creating a way to send people back to the devastated and dangerous country. It was announced after a meeting of the country's regional interior ministers late last year. Wer schwere Straftaten begeht oder terroristische Absichten verfolgt, um unserem Staat und unserer Bevölkerung empfindlich zu schaden, der sollte, muss unser Land verlassen. Derzeit gibt es in Deutschland rund 90 islamistische Gefährder mit syrischer Staatsangehörigkeit. Es ist nicht einzusehen, dass eine Abschiebung in diesen Fällen nicht einmal geprüft wird. Officials insist, the decision will only affect a very small group of serious offenders, but that has done little to comfort many here in Berlin's Syrian community. I want to know what's driving their fears, understand the consequences of the decision, and why it's happening now. Wafa Mustafa is one of hundreds of thousands of Syrian refugees who found safety in Germany. She knows what the Assad regime can do. An officer in Syria can ruin your whole life, can deprive you your freedom, can ruin your family's life, like mine. Wafa says her father had been taking part in anti-government protests and was kidnapped by regime forces. She's not heard from him in more than seven years. She's not a criminal or a terrorist, but the German government lifting the ban on deportation to Syria worries her. Her fears are driven, she says, by what has happened with asylum seekers from other countries with volatile security situations. We know from previous experiences, like the Afghanis, that the minute deportation, the door for deportation is open, everyone is a fair game. The German government warns its own citizens not to go to any part of Afghanistan because it's so dangerous. This graph shows the number of terror attacks that have taken place there since 2013. It was so contentious to send people back to Afghanistan that initially deportations were sporadic and involved convicted criminals. From 2013 to 2015, Less than 10 people were sent to Afghanistan per year. But numbers increased from 2016, and those on the deportation list were not all criminals or terrorists. Like 20-year-old Asif N, his application for asylum had been rejected, but he was studying at a vocational school with the prospect of being taken on as an apprentice. That's where police arrested him in 2017, pending deportation. His classmates protested, and he was eventually released. Stories like these concern Wafa, even though she has protection under asylum laws. I studied here, I've been here now for almost five years, and yes, I feel that I'm also at risk. I know it's now uh, a matter of uh, time, and maybe uh, in a few years I will also be deported to Syria, to a torture state. Organizations like Amnesty International say the Assad regime is guilty of gross human rights violations, like forced disappearances, systemic torture, and arbitrary executions. A 2016 report found that in one prison near Damascus, as many as 13,000 people were executed by hanging between September 2011 and December 2015, with no due process. And Amnesty International is not standing up for criminals, saying that they are great. We are standing up for their rights, and they also have the right not to be sent back to death. Under the rule of law that we have in Germany, it is really possible to deal with people who do not abide by German laws. We do have courts that will maybe find that people should be sent to prison. What we cannot do, Germany is bound to international law, we cannot send people back to a place that will not guarantee that these people are not subjected to torture or maybe even die because the situation on the ground is so poor as it is in Syria. Berlin has yet to announce any concrete plans to attempt a deportation to Syria, and it may prove impossible in practice to do so. Germany has no diplomatic relations with the Assad regime, 
or direct flights to the country. But Interior Minister Ho Sehofa said he is open to deportations following a case-by-case evaluation. He has been accused of pandering to the far right ahead of an election year. I think it's not a question of moving to the right or moving to other political um, positions. It's a question about uh, securing um, our society. Patrick Sensberg is a law professor and a member of Angela Merkel's ruling Christian Democrats. He says lifting the ban on deportations to Syria is above all about prevention. We are signaling um, that we don't accept people who are doing crime, who are doing major offenses here in uh, Germany, are not in a safe haven. We had several attacks in other European countries. We had attacks also here in Germany. In recent years, German authorities have arrested a number of Syrian migrants who posed a threat to public security. Despite the arrests, attacks have also taken place. In 2016, a Syrian who'd been denied asylum blew himself up near a music festival in the southern German town of Ansbach. And in October of 2020, a 20-year-old Syrian stabbed one person to death and wounded another in the eastern city of Dresden. The attacker was said to have had an Islamist background. If we have clear indicators that these people planning attacks are radicalized, we don't want to wait until the attack takes place and then react um, with panel law. We want to get before because we have to save our people in our country as well. Sensberg says that finding safe areas and ensuring deportees are not subjected to violations have to be secured beforehand. He insists none of this means Germany is willing to deal with the Assad regime as such just with lower levels of administration. We don't want diplomatic um, relations to the government yet, so we have to open other channels. We could talk about um, um, discussions on on the police level. We could talk about on lower level, lower than minister, state secretary. So we have uh, many possibilities about communication. Um, We are in communication about, for example, um, the intelligence um, um, institution. So, of course, if we want somebody to be brought back to Syria, I think there will be channels of communication that secures that. No deal with Assad! No. To Wafa, the Interior Ministry's decision to lift the ban on deportations to Syria could cast a shadow over Germany's reputation as a beacon of hope and justice for those who fled the Assad regime. The country's laws recognize universal jurisdiction for war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide. So when refugees identified two alleged former Syrian intelligence officers here, German officials acted, and the two men were arrested and charged. Their trial started in April 2020. Wafa spent days outside the courthouse holding photos of her father and others who've disappeared in Syria. She says that was when she found something she had long searched for, but only found in her adopted homeland. It was the moment where I was like, okay, so this is how justice looks like. And this is the first step on a very long, exhausting, difficult road towards justice for Syria and for Syrians. Germany decided that they will not compromise, they will not forgive war criminals, and they will prosecute them even though they are not Germans, the the crimes were not committed on a German land, and the victims are not German. And now we're here today talking about refugees, even criminals, uh, uh, to be deported to Syria. So it is a contrast, and it doesn't make any sense to us And we're here to say that this this is not acceptable. 